Now, after two years of operation, DHL Africa is shutting down its Pan-African online retail platform, eShop, at the end of the month. It was launched in 2019. eShop was designed to help global retailers sell goods to Africa's consumer markets. Through the platform, consumers in Africa could shop directly for more than 200 U.S. and U.K.-based online retailers with purchases delivered to their door by DHL Express. Sir Jai is an investment professional at Echo VC Partners, and he joins me now to discuss some of these stories. Officer, uh, good morning. Uh, DHL is not uh, up with any formal explanation as to what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, what's, what's the industry? What are you hearing on the ground? What's, <laughs> what would you call market here? So that's what we call it in the financial market. Yep. Uh, so different things could have caused this uh, because I felt that uh, it made sense for DHL to to try to you know to give access to to. Africans to buy goods abroad because they have delivery infrastructure already, right? So I think the problem they have is that is is that of a traditional company trying to do tech without allowing technology innovators to lead that because this is not the first time this kind of product is available in the market. I mean, there's a, there's another company called Buff Africa that's been doing this for over ten years, right? Uh, and then they've been you know growing year on year and then delivering this thing, but for it for it, for, for uh, a company that specializes in logistics, mm. because we, that's the biggest pain point for e-commerce, yeah. moving the goods from you know from the buyer to the seller. That's the biggest. And then DHL is a logistics you know powerhouse itself. So how come is not able to ensure that this uh, this, this, uh, this kind of service is sustained? It's definitely due to uh, the technology front that they have to deal with first, I believe. And that's where the biggest problem is for them. Do you think this could be issues around currency exchange rates, cybersecurity <laughs> kind of? Yeah, there are, are real technology issues. First, there are real technology issues because, because cybersecurity, all of that. But there are also issues about purchasing power of, of Africans, especially when uh, you live in a country where currencies are devalued you know, more than 100% you know, year on year. And then that, that to a large extent, reduces the purchasing power of people that could uh, potentially uh, but of course, Marquis will tell us that we have growing middle class. But of course, exchange is telling us to know the the, the middle class is to a large extent shrinking uh, by the day. Because if you earn a hundred thousand naira, you know, just five years ago, yes, I mean, in fact, three years ago, you, you, in fact, last year, <laughs> last year, shrinking, <laughs> right? So, so the problem is already uh, becoming difficult. And of course, this uh, these are goods that are priced in dollars. So it means that you have to buy these goods from the U.S. stores themselves, and then just digital dust is is you know shift that to you. So, so DHL uh, so, will have to think: of How do I get my money? And how do the merchants get their money? You know, so it's 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 always a big problem from from solving that problem. Uh, you know, from just purchasing that point, mm. and of course from a technology uh, standpoint, because yeah. again, this is a country where uh, you know, or these African countries have you know demand management for their for their foreign exchanges. It means that uh, there is limit, there is cap to what you can use your naira debit card to buy yes. from uh, from from foreign shops. So it means that you have to also figure out okay, how do you work around those cap? Those are technology problems that needs to be solved. You know, and and you know, it's 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 just a a nightmare. Yeah, you just have to, mm -hmm. to, to leave that and just stay with the traditional way of doing things uh, in Africa. But again, e-commerce e and logistics in mm -hmm. South Sudan Africa, how, how difficult is it or challenging? I mean, it's difficult. Uh, I know, uh, you know, investors, I mean, I was speaking to some founders today, they're like, uh, investors don't want to hear logistics again. You know, because if, if, if you think about it, a thousand naira to move goods, you know, from somewhere, let's say a a local merchant sells goods from somewhere in Lekki and, and it's delivered it to, to Bagada, for instance, and they charge 1,000 naira. How much is that in dollars? Less than $2. So how many $2 do you need to make a million dollars? Interesting. How many of that do you need to make $10 million? How many trips do you, how many bikes do you need to put on the road? How many trips do you need to make? Mm. So it's not, it's not interesting to a large extent, especially when it comes to last mile delivery. Yeah. It's, not, it's not interesting. The risk is so much. And at the last <laughs> mile is where the business of e-commerce and logistics really is. Because until the last mile, gets it, yeah. the man has, he hasn't got it. Exactly. So he hasn't delivered. It, it has delivered. Yes. But of course, it is, that same, uh, you know, it is that same last mile that yeah. the biggest problem really is. In, 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 Africa, in Africa, really. Logistics, infrastructure, and all that. Is this one clear example that infrastructure needs to improve before we on board or before we can thrive a whole lot more in terms of technology, when we look at developed economies? Yeah, so in developed economics, for instance, uh, I mean, there are, are, are platforms like Shopify that you just plug in and then you open an e-commerce site in, in five minutes, right? But, and of course, because there are, you know, uh, support systems, you know, that allows that to happen, you know. But in Nigeria here, you must have to 
build your website yourself. You have to figure out payment. You have to figure out collection. You have to figure out uh, dealing with uh, you know uh, corrupt you know delivery agents. You have to figure out you know legal states. Uh, what's it called? Uh, Enforcement, yeah. tax laws, all yes. these different local governments, you know, mm -hmm. stickers that you have to have. You have to deal with a lot of issues. All of these issues add to the cost of doing business, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and then of course add, add to the cost of, of 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 delivering service to the last mile. It's just difficult. I mean, every day I drive, you see three bikes being arrested by police, put in put in in trucks, and then you don't know what. It's it's just difficult. Yeah, and of course, yeah. the Lagos have to take uh, you know, maybe stickers from maybe different local governments. Imagine 20 different local governments or 52. Uh, I mean, depending on who you ask, right? These are different problems. That you, need. you don't even know how many local governments you have. You don't even know how many people you have to deal with. And when you cross from one local government to, to the another, other, and what, you, and what do you, and what do you totally. face? It's total. I mean, it's, it doesn't make any sense. We have a big problem <laughs> on our hands as far as the EFCFT is concerned. Do you agree? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a big problem uh, because... Right now, even Nigeria is already saying that uh, cement is off the list, you know, uh, sugar is off the list, of course, to protect, uh, you Local know, producers. Well, local producer, uh, right? So, again, they're those kind producers. of- producers. Yeah, they're producers, but, yes. I mean, for me, if it appears that there's, that there's a particular, you know, producer in mind, of course, every other person benefits from it, but, yeah. Anyways, uh, so, there are countries pro protecting different Part of their own economy. So it means that if you try to, to do a, a, a free trade agreement amongst countries in a continent, and then of course we say, okay, well, this is a no-go area, then that country says that's a no-go area, this one says this is a no-go area, then you, of course start bringing, you know, uh, what's it called, tr cracks, you know, in that, in that uh, agreement of it for countries. Uh, obviously, let's talk about the Nigerian uh, law firm, uh, TLP Advice. What do you mm -hmm. make of this expansion uh, into London, New York, and, and, and Toronto in Canada? I mean, I think it's 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 great. You know, uh, if you if you if you invest in 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 African startups today, you know that uh, a lot of times, especially when you get to the larger ticket size type uh, raises, transactions, right? It's foreign law firms that that handle these deals. Right. I can mention the names here, right? There are a lot of them. I mean, well, there are a few of them. That, but it's only a few law firms in Nigeria and Africa that get to participate in some of these transactions because, number one, they have local context, which is very important, right, uh, in, in doing deals in Nigeria. And, of course, uh, when these local firms that's okay, no problem, we want to go to where the investors really are, you know, then uh, it means that they can start, you know, essentially advising investors properly on how to look at you know, the Africa risk or the Nigeria risk uh, in a proper way. Because again, there's some things that you have to be explaining to investors every time. Why, why you can't you know, pay your AWS fees? You know, why you can't just pay Google for your email just like that? Because you can't. Because the, 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 I mean, the CBN restricts you know, how much. So they have to figure out how those things. And they are not corrupt practices from, the, from, from these companies. They're just regulatory hurdles that they need to cross. Yes. All of those things are the things that you know, local law firms and local contexts help bring in, into, into transaction. I think it's, it's always very helpful to have uh, someone looking out for, uh, for African, uh, African startups you know, in the eyes of investors. Mm. Uh, in terms of the, the law practice, mm -hmm. uh, do you think we have a new field emerging in, in which um, um, uh, you have lawyers or law students who know how to specialize in, in okay. technology law uh, other than the traditional Areas of just saying, well, broadly speaking, corporate law. Exactly. Right. So uh, I, I think it's not just for law, it's also for accounting and audit. I've seen these things happen over and over again. I've seen auditors say that, okay, uh, you know, they can't audit this company because they don't have assets, of course, because they're a software company. Yeah. Right. And it's looking for assets. It's, it's, it's trying to count cars and, and, and mm. fixed assets. And like, yeah, yeah you know, the, the, the way to view some of these, uh, these startups are totally different from the way they would, you view traditional businesses. So the same way with yeah. law, you know, uh, I mean, if, if Nigeria's, uh, uh, you know, tech space, the growth over the last you know, couple of years mm. is anything to go by, it means that we should start having emerging practices, focused professional, practices professional on practices. this, I mean, mm. I mean, I mean, legal practice. Yeah, I know. Focused on uh, yeah, accounting on, on, practice, exactly. audit and investigation and all of that. Correct. So mm. that's tough, you know, having, you know, professionals across all of these, you know, sectors to, to focus deeply on just technology law, uh, you know, in, in Africa. I mean, if, 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 if the data suggests anything to us, Nigeria is about four years behind, uh, 
behind Southeast Asia, mm. or Africa is about four years behind Southeast Asia. I mean, in tech, because we've seen that over and over again. Uh, the, the, the first, I mean, there's, a, there's, an, there's a long article about that. The first, you know, unicorn in, in Southeast Asia came about four years before Africa's first unicorn, right? Or Nigeria's first unicorn, as this might be. Now they have a ten billion dollar type business okay. and all of that. So we, we can we can start that's drawing cool. parallels. Okay. It, it from, doesn't, from, doesn't from mean. There. From okay. Yeah. okay, very, very interesting conversation yeah. uh, and quite a bit of an eye-opening uh, for this part of the conversation You're looking at one single person doing fintech or tech in Nigeria. There's a whole lot of uh, uh, ecosystem around it that we should start working on. Perhaps. Thank you so much, Professor Drojai, yeah. uh, investment prof uh, professional at uh, EcoVC Partners. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Okay.